fact we're having a kind of craze on model aeroplanes at the moment and we might have to do a video about that um, but right now uh, we've got something much simpler to do uh, well this is a battery a lithium polymer battery that belongs in one of the planes and uh, it has on it this uh, EC3 type um, plug which is actually a line socket but it's, a, it's what is on the battery and uh, so we wanted another spare battery but these sorts are quite expensive um, whereas this sort uh, is appreciably cheaper so we bought one of these however this has got a yellow XT60 line socket on it um, so we have to replace this yellow socket with one of these blue sockets and you might say well why make a video about changing a plug all you need to do is snip the wires and solve it and off you go uh, but there are one or two things you have to be very careful about when you uh, do this yes you see these are a very special kind of battery I've had to learn about them and I advise if you don't know much about them go and have a look on YouTube for videos because uh, they have to be treated very very carefully uh, because they can provide such an enormous current very quickly uh, for example if you were to short out these two wires it would be very bad and um, I've never seen it happen but you can read about it they will uh, swell up and burst into flames and, and they're extremely hazardous things uh, so they do need treating carefully and if for example in order to put uh, our new plug on I was to get these wire cutters and cut through both wires at once like that it would short the battery out and that would be very bad it might uh, weld the wires together and the whole thing would go up in smoke you know what I mean so we don't want anything like that no no well here's our workstation and we've got a soldering iron and we've got some solder um, and we've got the battery of course and a pair of cutters and we've got a um, EC3 plug or line socket which has got two pins like so uh, into which we must fit these two wires and we will only ever cut one of them at a time and work on that and in that manner they can't short out okay here are our two batteries and we're going to cut this one wire at a time and the lead on this is actually longer than the lead uh, on that one and this is even this is plenty long enough for the model so we can cut it back here um, but only one wire only one wire at a time so nothing bad happened there this pin here will require about three millimeters of wire to be stripped off here and we've got a uh, exacto knife and it's got you know it's got a green tape round it that means that the blade in it is quite blunt uh, it's still plenty sharp enough to cut you uh, but um, and of course I don't advocate doing this but we need to strip off three about three millimeters of this wire so if you carefully roll it along like that you will find that you can just pull off the insulation and uh, you've got about three millimeters there uh, here's our soldering iron it's a, a 30 watt Antex are very common in the UK and um, quite often uh, obviously you wipe it before you use it um, so that you've got a nice clean bit but you'll often see people um, then you use it and you'll often see people wipe it when they put it back well you shouldn't wipe it when you put it back not in my opinion because it's actually the residual solder on the bit that keeps it tinned ready for the next use now we need to tin uh, the end of this wire here so I wipe the bit and heat up the strands of the wire a bit from the top and the bottom and then put some solder in we're using uh, electronic cord solder here it's cord solder and then it's as simple as that yeah, yes yeah it's difficult to get it in focus uh, but uh, it's tinned all the way around the solder has run through the end and it does fit into the pin so uh, we were lucky that time now um, it's very common to hold the pin here um, in a uh, pair of pliers 
held with the handle held together by an elastic band. And um, although I'm not trying to be clever, I actually don't think this is a terribly good idea. Uh, no, I think what happens is with the pliers is that the pin, the workpiece, is here, uh, and the pliers form uh, an enormous heat sink, and the heat is conducted through the workpiece into the pliers. It'll take a long time to heat up a pair of pliers, and uh, when you put the solder in and melt the solder, it will take some time to melt. During that time, the flux will evaporate or boil off, and so when you put your uh, put your wire in. Uh, you'll get a joint, it'll be mechanically sound and electrically very low resistance or zero resistance uh, but I think it would be better still if it went into a nice fresh pool of solder. Now I think a better idea is to have a piece of heat resisting material, this is like a modern substitute for asbestos and you'd get it from places that do uh, jewellery craft with metal work um, and lightweight welding and so on so that you could make a little hearth, you know, to use a blowtorch. And it's got a 4.5 millimetre hole in it into which the pin just drops. So when we apply heat to the workpiece, it's going to be confined close to it. Here's an enlarged scan of the pin. And you see the wire fits into the little socket at the top. Um, and there's a hole in it. Um, and that's where you put the tip of your soldering iron to get the heat into the job. Uh, here we are, pin, there's the wire to be soldered in and I'll wipe the bit of the soldering iron and insert it into this little round hole there and then it'll start to heat up and I can put some solder into the cup here see it's going in already, this is electronic solder and I think you see now there's a nice big pool of it and we can just load the wire into that traditional blowing and I think there we are it's on. So we've at last got a pin on this wire and um, the thing we do next is not to put the pin on the other wire no we will hide this pin by putting it into the socket here so that it can't short out when we've got the other pin about and uh, the normal way of doing this if you're an expert uh, is while this is still hot you put it into the correct hole here, which is actually that one, the one with the square. Positive and negative are marked on these, and of course red is positive. Uh, and you press it down with a screwdriver while it's still hot. I'm not deft enough to do that, but I have worked out a dodge. We've just got a piece of quarter inch brass rod, and we've drilled it three and a half millimetres down to about that depth. Uh, then we've turned the end down to a whisker under 5 millimetres and then filed half of it away. So it's now like a punch, which will enable us to get our soldered pin down into the, the blue housing. Now comes the time of the pliers, which we can use to hold the, um, hold the receptacle down. And we know that this flat one here is the positive, uh, the red pin, which we've got. Um, because we know it's flat and also it's got a plus sign on it just to make sure. So we now prepare our pin, insert it into the hole. I take my patented punch, insert it down round the pin and as my old grandfather used to say, always use the right tool for the job. So truly it is the day of the pliers. And lo, we now have our plug with the red wire into the right side and it won't come out. So far, so good. Well, that's it then. Here we are. Here is our, we're halfway there and uh, we, we've transferred the wire to this so that they, this, they can't short together. Nothing can happen. It's so all we need to do is just quickly step through the other wire, the black wire. Uh, yes, I, of course I have twisted the strands of the wire together first. Just tin it.
Well, there we are then, we've done it. Um, that's only the third and fourth of those I've put on, but I think we're getting there. It, it seems to be all right. Uh, another advantage of using the heat resistant uh, material method is that a 30 watt iron, as you can see, is quite adequate and it's, uh, it's smaller and easier to handle than a 40 or 50 watt one. So um, there we are. Hope you don't think I've been uh, too pedantic here. <laughs> Bye now.